So thank you for coming back uh, after the short break. And now and we come to the last section of the day. Um, uh, let me introduce myself first. I'm Dr. Ho, uh, Paul Ho. I'm the president of the College of, Hong Kong College of Emergency Medicine. So the last section will be on emergency care. We will have two speakers. Uh, both speakers are com uh, fellows uh, from the College of uh, Emergency Medicine. Uh, the first one is uh, um, Dr. Ken Wu. Um, Dr. Ken Wu is a associate consultant of the emergency department of the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. He uh, graduated from the Manchester uh, uh, University from the UK and obtained his uh, fellowships uh, of um, emergency medicine in Hong Kong. And he has a special interest in SWAT medicine since the very early days uh, in his training. He is now the chairman of the SPOT Medicine Subcommittee of the Hong Kong College of Emergency Medicine. And we are trying to promote the field of uh, SPOT Medicine uh, within the medical profession, especially within emergency. He has various experience in supporting uh, various uh, SPOT occasions in Hong Kong, like the Robbie Zevin, like the Hong Kong Badminton Open Championships, and um, also the recent East Asian Games. So um, today his topic is on uh, uh, head injury on the, um, how we um, deal with uh, sports uh, concussions and how to take care of your head. Okay, may I pass the stage to Dr. Wu? Hi. Thank you, Dr. Ho, for the introduction. Uh, I can imagine at the end of the day, most of you are a bit concussed now, isn't it? So if you feel a bit dizzy or a bit uh, sleepy, just Give your head a good shake, okay? And I hope that will uh, weaken you a little bit. So, what is concussion? Uh, in Chinese, lou zhan dong. Uh, I presume most of you have heard about it recently. So, concussion come in the Latin, uh, contrary. So it means shaken violently. So imagine if you put a, a, a tofu, a tofu, in a box, and then shake it really hard. Can you imagine what the tofu look like after you open the box? It's pretty messy, isn't it? So your brain inside your skull, it's the same principle. If you shake it really bad, uh, your brain will be in similar uh, condition. So concussion is a mild form of traumatic brain injury, as you can imagine. It is also referred as a chronic traumatic encolopathy, the short CTE. Uh, it was first described among the, uh, the, the boxers nearly 100 years ago, so it's nothing new. But uh, recently, it received a lot of uh, high profile uh, attention from the media because of a litigation uh, among the uh, 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 players in North America. It is a hot topic uh, because currently the, it is the most topical and emotive issue in the world of sports medicine because it received unprecedented, uh, unprecedented worldwide media exposure. In 2014 alone, there were 37 papers on concussion in British Journal of Sport Exercise and Medicine. At the moment, it's the number one player welfare issue in the world sports. Uh, the acute management of uh, concussion is being influenced by the uh, threat of both acute and potential long-term complication of the injuries. Uh, the litigation and the threat of the litigation plays a significant role in the management of concussion at administrative, medical, and research level. Uh, these are just some example. Uh, I pick it up from Google. Uh, this is the uh, uh, National Hockey League uh, in North America. And they are having trouble with the uh, litigation, the lawsuit, after some uh, top player died uh, after the uh, repetitive uh, head injury. In the uh, National College of uh, Athletic Association, uh, only recently, uh, they settled for uh, 70 million uh, US dollar uh, fund uh, for the, uh, the, the lawsuit among the college athletes. 70 million sounds a lot. 
But only last year, the NFL prepared to pay one billion US dollar to settle the lawsuit. And uh, they thought one billion dollar is a lot, and they thought that was enough. But only a couple months ago, uh, some players, they thought it wasn't enough. So they asked for more. What happened is, some player with Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, and uh, amyotrophic uh, lateral sclerosis and advanced dementia, uh, they received millions of dollars for compensation. But there was no reward for players who suffer from depression or mood disorder or seizures. Uh, and they claim it was related to the concussion. Also, the critics, you know, the media, feel the, the problem. And what happened to the future cases? There was no mention, you know, compensation to the future cases. So the $1 billion compensation is been uh, held at the moment. And only last Christmas Day in America, uh, Will Smith released, uh, or not Will Smith, he was in this movie called Concussion. And uh, just, you know, increase more discussion among the general public. If we have time, I can show you some of the, uh, the trailer of this uh, movie. Uh, the latest uh, definition for concussion, it is from the uh, uh, Zurich Concussion uh, Consensus. It's defined as a traumatic induced transient disturbance of brain function. It's caused by complex physiopathological process. Uh, it has been referred to as a mild traumatic brain injury, short MTBI. While all the concussions are MTBIS, but remember, not all the MTBIS are concussion. So not all the mild head injury will result in concussion. So concussion is a subset of the uh, mild traumatic brain injuries. So there's a less severe end of the brain injury spectrum. So it's generally, it is uh, self-limiting in duration and resolution. Currently, there's no biochemical test. We can test a positive concussion. In the laboratory, it's been demonstrated, it is a neural metabolic process, a cascade. Uh, it's a complex ca a cascade of ionic a metabolic pathophysiological patho event that is accom accompanied by microscopic axonal injury. And it is the disruption of this ionic balance and normal metabolism require energies to reestablish the homeostasis. But during this reestablishment, uh, reestablishing re homeostasis, if there's any further disruption, the whole process will be uh, damaged. So the brain will not recover fully. So not until the uh, normal brain function is restored, the, uh, the concept of increased post-concussive vulnerability show that a second brain injury will result in a worsening cellular metabolic changes and my significant uh, cognitive deficits. That is the theory behind the development of concussion after a repeated brain injury. So when we were in medical school, we learned about Glasgow Coma Scale. The head injury is, was uh, divided, uh, classified into mild, moderate, and severe. And the SWOT concussion is somewhere here. So the threshold, where is the threshold? Nobody really can tell. The mechanism, mechanism of injury is important. It is a direct blow to the head or from an indirect trauma. The linear or rotational or direct impact force uh, or com combination of this cause the damage in your brain tissue. And this are some of the uh, video uh, show the show you the uh, the impact of the head injury. Oh, JP 
Peterson. There goes JP Peterson. Oh, avoiding material. This guy lost consciousness immediately. Kind of direction and they just went straight head on head at that kind of speed. My goodness. There he goes around the player who's standing still and he's another one. Call to Kano, to Nanu. Oh, oh no. Here's Nanu. Bulfa. And out comes the mouth guard. And oh, that's not nice to see because that's two weeks in a row for Colin Slade. You can Second see his mouth guard. Two weeks. Came out. His mouth and threw away. You can imagine the, sure the impact force. Okay. He's still now getting treatment. Because that is front on tackle from the most powerful men going that's why the, in, the mecha mechanism of injury is important you know, as a medical personnel at the pitch side we have to be you know alert all the time you know we are not in the concussion state we need to watch the player if they have an injury like that we know what happened so we can make a diagnosis quickly if we didn't watch the, the match carefully we might miss this Luckily, nowadays we can use video replay so we can watch the players uh, after the injury and we can confirm the uh, head injury. So, the sign and symptoms of concussion. If someone, you know, have a head injury, you know, they can have, you know, loss of consciousness. They may have impaired conscious level. They might appear vacant. You know, they look a bit, you know, they look a bit blank. And they might have an unsteady gait. You know, they might look like if they are drunk. You know. uh, they, might have, they might present to, uh, to us with vomiting, or suddenly they become you know, a bit clumsy. They cannot play as effectively as possible, just like uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Chen mentioned earlier. They might become inappropriate emotional. You know, the player might come to us crying. They didn't know what happened. They just cry. You know. And they might complain of headache and easy. And sometimes you know, they might say, oh, they feel like they are in a fog. Uh, in Chinese, yeah. In cognitive impairment, they might you know, have a slow reaction time. You know, their reaction will be slower. They might be confused. You know, they might be disorientated. When you ask them something, you know, they can't really answer you properly. And when you ask them something, they were looking you know, in a different direction. They were not paying attention to what you say. And uh, they might have loss of memory. You know, they cannot remember what happened during the match. If, if we encounter a player with this sign and symptoms, we have to strongly suspect he had a concussion, even though if he don't have any uh, head injury uh, history. So in the Zurich concussion statement, so con concussion is considered to be one of the most uh, complex injuries in sports medicine to diagnose, assess, and manage. Just like uh, the, the the participation screening you know, we discussed this morning, the cardiac event is also very complex. Making a diagnosis can be subtle and can be difficult. Sometimes it requires expertise to make a diagnosis. Currently, concussion is underdiagnosed. Fortunately, 80% of the concussion will be solved within 7 to 10 days. Remember, 90% of the concussion does, uh, do not associate with loss of consciousness. And all the advanced imaging study nowadays uh, will not show anything. The cognitive test uh, can be useful, but uh, might not be definitive. What we do when we suspect someone has a concussion, we recognize it and we remove them. No return to play on the same day. Make sure they will not go back to play. A lot of players, after they have their injury, 
they want to go back. They want to go back to play, but we have to insist that they cannot return to play on the same day. And they need to have physical and cognitive rest. Physical means you know, they cannot do any physical exercise. Cognitive rest, uh, so make sure they are not using their brain too much. It's a bit difficult, especially in Hong Kong, you know, most of the people would like to play their video game, uh, watching telly, uh, watching some exciting uh, uh, video. We need to advise them, cut that. We advise them, once the symptoms have subsided, they can have a gradual return to play. I will go, that, uh, go back to the return to play protocol later on. For young athletes, or in the community players, the mandatory stand down, because in the elite or professional level, you know, they have medical personnel to look after them. But in the community, or in the young uh, players, mm, we need to make sure they do not continue to play. We can use SCAT3 or some called test to monitor their progress. These are SCAT3. Uh, they help us to monitor, to make a diagnosis, to monitor and chart their progress. This is quite a complicated form. Uh, you can download it, search it on the Google. It's a standardized form nowadays. Uh, the IOC recommend to use it, FEVER recommend to use it, uh, the RLB use it, in Hong Kong we use it as well. In the elite level, in the professional level, uh, the RLB also introduced the HIA, the Head Injury Assessment Form. There are three different uh, forms. The HIA one, we need to do it soon after the head injury. The player sent off the field, we can do it on site or in the medical room. There are some questions we can ask, you know, what venue you are in Hong Kong, you know, in Rugby 7, you know, what venue you are, they probably say, oh, in Hong Kong, that's fine. You don't, we don't expect them to say Hong Kong Stadium. Uh, which half is it in? You know, first half, second half? But make sure you know the answer as well. If they tell you the wrong answer, you don't know? Doesn't make sense. And uh, what score is it? Or what team did you play last week? Uh, and what game did you play last, uh, last game? Those are five questions we need to ask. But unfortunately, all these are in English. We, have, we encounter difficulties when we assess players who, does, who don't understand English. A lot of time we need to find a translator. Once one, one of the five questions, they cannot give the right answer, we need to pick them up. And then we can continue with further questions. There are lots of, uh, uh, a whole set of questions, but we need to finish it within 10 minutes. So it's a bit rush. Once it is done, the player uh, normally, uh, they will be uh, out of play for that game at least. And then uh, after the game finish, we can do the HIA 2 or on the same day. It is more detailed. There are a lot of questions and score. Uh, there are a number of symptoms you know, like headache, pressure in hair, neck pain, the total 22. So we can score 20, uh, so many symptoms out of 22. And also we can score the severity of the symptoms. We can score from not to six. The worst is 132. If they score zero, that is, you know, the severity is, is none. That help us, you know, to make a diagnosis. And there's more question we can uh, test on the uh, uh, athlete. Uh, I've done this a few times. It took me over 30 minutes to each of this. So it's not a simple uh, questions. And also we need to do some balance test. Uh, but it's been 
uh, validated that uh, the balance test is the most accurate one. What we do, we put a red tape on the, on the floor. It's about three meters long, and we ask them to walk two to two, uh, to and fro within uh, 14 seconds. If they can do that, they pass. If they can't do it, that means they fail. What they do is like this. Even a normal people, a normal person, can be difficult. Imagine if they have a concussion, you know, it is a very difficult task. And then the uh, HIA 3 have to be done uh, 36 to 48 hours post game. Normally, uh, we do it after two nights of resting, two nights of sleep. In Hong Kong, uh, the rugby union, Lucy Clark, uh, has done a very good job in uh, educating the athletes, uh, the referees and coaches, and also uh, the, the, the parents. Uh, she produced uh, this concussion guide uh, in both English and Chinese, try to educate the, uh, all the involved parties to tell them how important concussion is, make them realize the, uh, what are the signs and symptoms. Once they have it, they need to stop playing. Uh, I will ask uh, the staff uh, to distribute the uh, card. If you want one, please have it. Yep. And this is the Chinese version. Once the player symptoms has subsided, uh, we can you know, let them have the gradual return to play. In Hong Kong setting, normally we would, take, we would recommend to have uh, two weeks, you know, make sure they are okay, and then we can, uh, the, the coach will introduce the gradual return to play protocol. You can see there are six different steps. Each step uh, consists of 24 hours. And each step is a gradual progression of the physical and cognitive and the, uh, the, the coordination of the player. So it's a gradual uh, increase of the, uh, uh, all the elements uh, of, the, of, your, of your body function. In Hong Kong, the, the, from the ex uh, experience of rugby union, most players, they are either stuck at the first first 24 hours, they can, ne they can never recover. You know, they always feel something not right, so they can never start to return to play. Or at stage four, the first three stage, you can see, you can see that they are just doing some general uh, movement, light uh, aerobic exercise. But in the four stage, they start having some uh, drills. It uh, demands the physical demand is higher, and it needs the brain function higher, and this will start having problem here. If someone have problem, for example, at stage four, we'll recommend them to take a rest until symptom three, and then they start again at stage above. So there are some factors uh, is associated with increased risk of the concussion. If the player tells that he has previous history of concussion, unfortunately, most players will lie about their history. They won't tell you the truth. Also, the, uh, the match, they have higher chance of having a concussion than the training. Obviously, you know, they want to win. Uh, they more, become more physical. Uh, there are some uncertain risks associated with concussion. Like uh, Patrick Young's uh, presentation this morning, he mentioned about the, 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 the woman appears to be at greater risk of concussion. Uh, we can't find any reason for this. Uh, also, in children, it's said to be more vulnerable and have a protracted recovery. But the data from uh, Abraham uh, study did not suggest this. So uh, more research is needed to, to, to find the reason for this. 
There's some other uncertain risk, the genetic, the playing position of the player, the match period, the playing level, either you are the first division or the bottom division, not sure. And how about the protective gear? Only a few weeks ago, the NFL uh, award uh, one of the uh, university uh, in the States, the Washington University, they want to do some research in the helmet, how to protect their player to minimize the uh, head injury and concussion. And we have to wait and see the results. So the pearls, if we recognize a concussion, we need to remove the player, stop them playing. If we are not certain whether they have a concussion or not, we move to the uh, safer side, sit them out. And if you think it is a concussion, it is a concussion. Never return to play on the same day, and we can use the SCAT-3 or the court testing card to follow up the player. The symptoms is free, they can go to the uh, gradual return to play protocol. And if they have, if the player have recurrent problem, we need to send somebody who is, uh, who have the expertise in diagnosing concussion and management con concussion. Uh, in Hong Kong, David Owens uh, is one of the, uh, uh, he is the uh, medical doc uh, director of Rugby Union. He has enormous number experience in uh, managing concussion. And uh, I would also at this point, I would like to acknowledge uh, his contribution. Uh, all, a lot of uh, my presentation here, uh, he gave me a lot of uh, advice on, on this presentation. In rugby union, uh, they have a general rules for adults. If they have a concussion, they will have a mandatory rest for three weeks. Advise them, you know, no physical uh, exercise, uh, no cognitive uh, exercise, no beer, no cigarette. That is difficult though. In children under 12, uh, I would recommend for no play for four weeks and advise the parents, let them have complete mental and physical rest. Uh, that is very difficult. In Hong Kong, you can if imagine, you ask the parent, tell their kid not to study, not to use computer game for four weeks, and they will kill you. Oh, right. Uh, just have enough time to show you this. As a boy, heaven was here, and America was here. You could be anything, you could do anything. I am the wrong person to have discovered this. If you don't speak for them, who will? Owns the day of the week. No food was presented today because there simply isn't any. They have to listen to us. This is bigger than they are. What do you think they're doing to you now? That's nothing. You have no idea how bad this could get. I have to keep going. They want you to say you made it all up. They continue to deny my work. Men continue to die. Sometimes in life, you're asked to leave. Okay, 
this film had just been screened in the state over the Christmas Day. Uh, it's not in long yet, but um, if you are interested, uh, in my, uh, you can uh, search it uh, in the next uh, next flex. <laughs> okay. So that is the end of my presentation. I uh, hope you enjoyed it.